In a previous video, I showed you how to pull the stock prices from Yahoo Finance into Microsoft Excel. This time around, I'm going to show you how to pull a company's financial statements into your spreadsheet. So in front of me, I've got a the Wall Street Journal's website for Walmart Inc. and, and their financials for the last five years. And the reason I like using the Wall Street Journal website for, for this purpose is the data is organized in a table, which is going to download nicely into Power Query. And also the, the URL is really easy to manipulate. For instance, I got Walmart's ticker symbol in here, um, annual, telling me it's annual, it's the income statement. So for instance, if I want to select a balance sheet or a cash flow, the URL is going to change. So it makes it easy to manipulate based on what you want to, what you want to see. If I click on quarterly, it's going to update the URL to show quarter instead of annual. And I've got the quarterly data in here. So I'm going to start with this as my base URL. I'm going to hit control C to copy that. And then I'm going to Excel here and on the data tab, select from web and enter that URL into here. And so now power query is going to do is look at that website and look at all the different tables that it finds on there that could pet potentially download data from. So there's going to be two tables on this, on this, uh, on the, on this URL. One is going to be, um, useless without any, without any data for us to use the, this document table. But what I'm going to use is this table zero right below it. Cause this one's going to have the financials and the different quarterly data but I'm not going to load this into Excel just yet. The first thing I'm going to do is transform this data because it's got an extra, extra column that I don't need. Plus I need to address an issue with these headers. So I'm going to hit transform and now it's going to load up power query. And so the first thing I'm going to do is remove that extra column. So right click on it, remove just to sort of make it a bit cleaner. Um, but the other issue is these headers you'll notice, that you know these are the period end dates. So in the future, these names are going to change, and that can be a problem. And I'll show you why. So when you create, um, when you import data into Power Query, it automatically creates this change type step where Power Query tries to determine what the what the format should be of of these values. Right now, it's recognizing everything as text. So this is not terribly useful for me just because there's spaces in here. These dashes are probably reading as text and not numbers. So this isn't a really useful step for me. So I can probably just remove this, hit delete. And the benefit of that is now that hard coding is gone because previously it was looking at, uh, at changing these specific headers based on their descriptions. But again, if these headers are going to change, then that's not going to be really useful and it's going to uh, cause errors when Power Query is not finding those headers. Now, if you did want to keep that step in there, because, you know, let's say it, it worked well, you prefer to keep it in there. Another option could be that with the headers, you can change them so that they're demoted and used as the first row. So now you've got these generic column one, column two, column three, and so on headers rather than these period end dates, which, which are going to change over time. Now, you'll notice automatically it does that change type step yet again. So if you don't want, uh, if you want to keep the headers as they are, then you can get rid of the change type and not demote the headers and just leave it as is. And then this should work fine because there's none of these steps here. You'll notice are referencing any of these, you know, July 31st, April 30th, uh, headers. So it's going to be fine. The source is just pulling from that URL. So now, once I've got the, the, these issues addressed, you know, I can hit close and load and download this data into Excel. And so the one other thing that I'm going to do here, once this data is loaded is I'm going to modify, uh, the URL a little bit just to make it a bit more dynamic in case that, uh, you know, I want to change the ticker. I don't just want to pull in Walmart's financials all the time, because right now this will work fine. And it'll update um, the data from uh, from Wall Street Journal for for Walmart. But let's say I want to change it. Let's say I want to add a ticker field. I'm gonna highlight this and uh, use a 
use a range, let's say, just call it ticker. Okay, and right now it's gonna say WMT. And so what I'm gonna do now is modify the, the Power Query link just so it's gonna look at this ticker to determine which company I wanna download the financials for. So if I go into data, queries and connections, right click, edit, I can go in here and modify that URL. So I'm gonna click on advanced editor here and I'm gonna create another line of code here. This time I'm just gonna call it ticker, set to equal Excel dot current workbook, and then open and close parentheses, and then curly brackets, open, and set the name equal to ticker. And so this is if you again if you if you want to use a custom a custom uh, a variable in this link. Change the content. And so you just want to copy this sort of syntax anytime you're using a named range just to make sure that uh, you know it's saved as one of these steps. So now what I can do is plot that ticker right into here. So where it says WMT, I'm going to put quotations and use an ampersand and reference ticker. Ampersand again. Open quotations again. This time get rid of W. MT and hit done. And so now you'll notice now I've got that ticker up here, which is recognizing as Walmart. We've got the, the source. So I just need to set these privacy warnings to, to go away. And then once that's addressed, now the URL will download based on um, that, that ticker that I, that I selected for Walmart. Okay, and now it's downloaded that, removed columns, and now I hit close and load. And now, so the data is gonna look exactly the same just because I'm still looking at the same, same ticker. Okay, but now what I can do is, let's say if I wanna change this to, let's say I wanna look at Amazon's financials. Amazon, and, the, and under data I can hit refresh all, and now it's gonna update Amazon's financials here. I can check the queries and connection status just to make sure that it's updating. And then once it's done, you'll notice now I've got a different set of, of data in front of me. So that makes it really easy if you want to manipulate it to change it um, so that it downloads based on the ticker that you've entered in, making it easy to, to make these changes later on and uh, jump from, from ticker to ticker. And so if you follow the link in the description of this video, you can follow along with the post and copy the, um, the code for the, the custom variable just to make sure that you've got the exact syntax in there. Because again, you can, you can set up the link for specifically one company, but it's not going to be as versatile and it's always useful to use a named range just so you have that added flexibility. So that's how you download financials into Excel using Power Query. Hope you found this video useful and uh, thanks for watching.